In this video, I'm going to be talking about pressurization, especially how it is used in airplanes. And then what has it got to do with our ears popping or having that pain effect while in flight, especially while in the climb or in the descent. And then finally, I'm going to be telling you certain experiments, very, very simple and basic experiments. Doesn't require any stuff or any uh, apparatus like that. But still, you can do this experiment on your next flight. And uh, that's how you'll be understanding even easier and better about pressurization yourself. So if you guys are ready for this video, pass in your seat belts because we're ready for takeoff. What's up fellow aviators? Welcome back to the flight tube of Flying Simplified through YouTube. Ali Azghar here. On this channel, I talk about interesting aviation facts, aircraft knowledge, how airplanes fly and all of those sort of things and then how you yourself can become a pilot. So if you think yourself to be uh, uh, an aviation enthusiast or if you yourself are interested to be a pilot in the future, then this channel is for you. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that red subscribe button and also share this channel with your friends. Having said that, let's move ahead towards today's video itself. As you know, this video is going to be about pressurization and how it's used in airplanes. But before that, what is pressure in the first place? So as you know from your school definitions, very basic ones, pressure is force by area. So it means the amount of force that is being exerted on a surface if you divide the total force by the total area you get the total pressure being exerted on that surface so if you're getting complicated it's simple the amount of impact force that is being exerted on each square unit of the surface it can be a square centimeter or a square inch or a square feet and so on and so forth so that initial impact force that is there that can be coming from anywhere maybe a person punching a punching bag or a very heavy load being placed on a surface but within aviation there is a very important pressure value in aviation that is the atmospheric pressure meaning the amount of pressure being exerted on us by the atmosphere surrounding us by the gases and all of the things surrounding our earth and that is very high at lower altitudes and it decreases with altitude and the reason behind that is gravity you know uh, gravity is exerted on these gases as well because of that most of the gases like oxygen and nitrogen all of these things are trapped and they settle down towards the lower part of the earth and that is why the pressure near the ground surface is really high and as soon as you start climbing as soon as you climb and go up the pressure starts to decrease now the units of measurement of pressure is Pascals and at ground level the atmospheric pressure is 1013 hectopascals in standard conditions. Hecto is simply 100. So it is 101300 pascals of pressure but you know hectopascals is an easier method to tell and that's what is used in aviation as well. So in standard conditions at ground level the atmospheric pressure is at 1013 hectopascals and this value keeps decreasing with height because of the things that I uh, explained just before. Now this 1013 hectopascal is for a standard Day, but with the temperature changes and a lot of different changes taking place in the atmosphere uh, this pressure value at the ground level can change but however this doesn't change so much that it becomes uncomfortable for a human body right and uh, the limits for human body is you know if you start climbing till 10,000 feet the hectopascal value is gonna drop till 700 hectopascals which is still manageable by a normal human being but anything above that starts problems for human bodies be it for breathing or for oxygen concentration levels etc etc but as you guys know we are not only confined till 10,000 feet we pilots take these big airliners and airplanes up until even 30 or 40,000 feet right and how do we do that without creating discomfort for passengers or even causing deaths in the passengers right that is where pressurization kicks in and let's see how we do it now before i explain you how we pressurize the aircraft cabin itself i want to give you a very simple example and this can be straight away applied to the airplanes and that is any closed container for example a balloon right a balloon when deflated doesn't have air in it but as soon as you start blowing air in it obviously the balloon starts to inflate but other than that the air pressure inside the balloon starts to increase and after a point this material of the balloon you know it comes to its limits and if you blow any more air in it the balloon will burst right you know this is a very basic fact even a small child knows it and very similar to that is your room the room has ventilation for exact same purposes other than obviously uh, so that the air inside the room doesn't stink other reason why we need ventilation and an outlet out of the room is because if we keep exhaling carbon dioxide or maybe uh, uh, an ac might be blowing out air if there is nowhere no place for the air to exit the room from the room might get pressurized a lot 
and it might burst. Yes, pressure is exactly that powerful. And this is exactly the same principle that we use in pressurizing the aircraft cabin itself. And before I give you further details, if you guys are finding value and information out of this video, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel and share this channel and the video with as many friends as possible. Let's hit 20,000 subscribers very soon. Having said that, let's continue with the video. So the airplane pressurization also works in the very similar principle. Air from the engine is taken in, it passes through the air conditioner so that it's cooled down to a normal temperature for human beings. I'll explain more about that in a separate video on air conditioning of airplanes. But other than that, the air is taken in, it's cooled down and then released inside the cabin. And then uh, we have this outflow valve from where the air can escape out or vent out. It's very similar to the ventilation. Although not all of the air from the cabin is allowed to escape through the outflow valve. Some of it is recirculated, but like I said, I'll be explaining about that in a separate video on air conditioning. But once the air is inside it, it's also allowed to vent out through that outflow valve. And the way we pressurize the cabin of the airplane is just closing that outflow valve. Once that outflow valve is closed, the whole entire aircraft cabin is essentially a closed container just like your balloon and air is coming in from the engines but it's not allowed to go out and that's how the air pressure inside starts increasing and rising and that's how you can pressurize the aircraft cabin so as soon as the airplane starts its take off roll the outflow valve is shut in and the pressurization of the airplane starts and it is maintained the cabin pressure is maintained like that and even though physically we are at up high at 40,000 feet inside the cabin since the pressure is maintained at a higher level we will be feeling not that we are at 40,000 feet but instead at 8,000 feet or something like that and this outflow valve doesn't completely shut it stays open partially to allow a little bit of air to escape so that the, there's not a lot of pressure built up inside the cabin because once the aircraft climbs up there'll be a lot of pressure differential between the cabin within the cabin and the pressure outside in the atmosphere and that is really really bad for the wall of the airplane the fuselage the materials that's used to build the entire structure of the airplane this will be exerting a lot of force because there's a huge pressure differential the difference in pressure from from within the cabin and outside because you know right if there's a pressure differential then there'll be a lot of force exerted on the wall to equalize to try and equalize the pressure on both the sides and that is the exact reason why the pressure inside the cabin is not maintained at 1013 hectopascal of ground level pressure value instead the pressure inside is allowed to decrease a little bit so that the altitude inside the cabin is felt somewhere about 8000 feet so that we, it, it's a balance between you know the uh, discomfort for passengers obviously at 8000 feet no one will feel any kind of discomfort and obviously on the other hand uh, to maintain to give a lot of life to the structure of the airplane itself and for the passenger comfort the position of this outflow valve is very very smartly computed by the airplane and it matches the aircraft altitude meaning if the airplane wants to climb to 40,000 feet and you know it climbs at 2,000 feet per minute meaning it will take 20 minutes to reach 40,000 feet the outflow valve will, will adjust its position so that in 20 minutes the cabin altitude goes from 0 to 8,000 feet and very similar to the outflow valve there is another valve known as safety valve and as the name suggests it's there for safety. I told you that there's a differential pressure. If there's a lot of differential pressure between the inside of the cabin and outside, it's really, really bad for the structure of the airplane. And if a lot of limit is crossed, then the structure might also give way. It might break, right? Very similar to the balloon. If there's a lot of air pumped inside the balloon, the material will give way and it'll break, right? Very similar to that. It might happen to the structure of the airplane. And for this safety, a safety valve is in place which will not allow the differential pressure to cross this limit. If at all the differential pressure is rising a lot, meaning there's a lot of difference between the uh, pressure inside the cabin and outside, this safety valve will open up, it will allow the uh, uh, air to escape. So the difference in pressure between inside the cabin and outside reduces or the differential pressure reduces and that is how we can eliminate the risk of the structure of the airplane breaking. If it's a lot for you to take or if you guys are confused in all of that sort of things, I can give you a very, very simple and basic example. This thing lies in every home, every kitchen. This thing is there and that is pressure cooker. Aircrafts are essentially very, very big and giant pressure cookers. As soon as the lid of the pressure cooker is closed, the pressure inside starts increasing very similar to the outflow valve being closed in the airplanes and pressure starting to build up. 
and up until a point the pressure rises after which the limit is reached and that whistle on top of the pressure cooker it goes up and all of the steam and gases is allowed to escape right you guys know you guys have experienced this in your homes as well and that is very similar to the safety valve in the airplanes as soon as the limit of the differential pressure is reached that safety valve opens up it allows the air to escape so that the pressure is equalized not equalized but reduced the differential pressure is reduced and that is how the pressurization in the airplanes work so that was about the pressurization of the airplanes and now coming to how all of this is related to your ears popping or that uh, pain effect coming in and you guys might have experienced that it only happens while you are climbing or descending and not while you are in cruise why does that happen and the answer to that is differential pressure very similar to what we have learned before but this time the differential pressure the difference between the pressure in the cabin and your inner ear actually the middle ear but still let's uh, call it uh, inner ear for the ease of this video uh, as soon as the aircraft starts to climb the pressure is equal on both the sides so there's an eardrum in between which separates the inner ear from the outer part so the pressure outside and inside is you know more or less same but as soon as the airplane starts to climb the pressure inside the cabin starts to reduce however the pressure trapped inside your inner ear remains where it is and that creates a pressure differential and that tries to push out and that is how the eardrums pop and that gives you that pop sound or the uh, pain in the ears and exactly opposite happens in a descent this time you know when the aircraft is in the cruise there's uh, the pressure outside that is in the cabin is similar to the pressure inside your inner ear but as soon as the airplane starts to descend the pressure in the cabin starts to increase however the pressure trapped inside your inner ear is still at a lower uh, value and this time the pressure will try to pop your ear inwards the eardrum inwards and that is why you can hear the pop sound once again and now coming to those very very simple and basic experiments that you yourself can try on your next flight doesn't require any apparatus is essentially you can carry a packet of chips with you on the flight and you will see that on ground the chips packet is essentially deflated not really airtight and puffed up but once the airplane climbs to the cruising altitude the chips packet will become airtight and puffed up because the pressure inside the cabin has dropped and uh, you know the pressure trapped inside the chips packet will now push the uh, chips packet outwards and obviously uh, once the airplane has descended the chips packet will get deflated once again and one another very simple method to observe exactly the same thing is you can ask for a water bottle to the cabin crew drink half of it and then close the lid airtight once the airplane reaches the cruising altitude you will see that the water bottle is really really airtight and puffed up now at cruising altitude just open the cap once and then close it back once again so that that pressure is trapped inside the water bottle once the airplane descends now you will see that you even without touching the water bottle the bottle shrinks inwards and this is because the pressure trapped inside the uh, water bottle was lower because it was from a higher altitude and after the aircraft descends the pressure outside increases so there's a higher pressure outside and a lower pressure inside the water bottle and that will shrink the water bottle inwards so that was all about pressurization in airplanes and how do we do them but did you guys know that this drop in pressure with altitude is one of the many other reasons why airliners don't provide parachutes to the passengers to know further details i had already made a video on that and that video will be coming up on the screen at the end of this video and if you guys like this one make sure to like it hit the subscribe button and share this video with as many friends as possible see you in another video until then take care bye bye happy landing